Namaskar. Today we will be beginning with our lecture 13 of our course on sales and distribution management and uh, this is the third lecture in the third module and uh, the subsequent two lectures as well uh, which is lecture 13, 14 and 15 we shall be talking about planning, sales, forecasting and budgeting. In this particular lecture which is lecture 13 the concepts that we will be covering will be one the meaning of sales planning, two characteristics of a good or an or a effective sales plan and three the meaning usage and types of sales forecasts. Subsequently, we shall be dealing with the methods of sales forecasting and we will be talking about uh, sales budgeting. Now, uh, let us first start uh, and talk about sales planning. Now, one of the key functions of sales management is planning because as we have discussed in the earlier classes, uh, we start with a plan and then we must execute it with our resources and be able to reach our targets. And what is also important is the control function or the control mechanism which we shall subsequently discuss as a part of the sales budget. Now what is sales planning? It involves making decisions about the long term sales objectives and uh, the targets of a company. Uh, the sales planning typically is done by the senior management of the organization which is actually responsible for devising and uh, you know a plan and assuring uh, the execution of the sales management planning of an organization. So uh, when we talk about sales planning uh, it involves making decisions about the long term uh, objectives of the company in terms of uh, the sales to be earned, the profits to be generated, the market share to be be earned etc. And while it is usually devised and formulated by the senior management of the organization, uh, the senior management is also responsible for ensuring that it is executed as planned uh, and uh, so, so the sales senior sales management is responsible not only for devising but also assuring the execution of the sales management planning of an organization. Now uh, it, it when we talk about sales planning, we would further like to add that it is an effective method that involves activities like sales forecasting, demand management and determining sales targets keeping in mind the desired level of profitability of an organization. Now a sales uh, team is the one which acts as the grassroot level, it acts as the grassroot level, it attains the targets and objectives which have been laid out or formulated uh, in, in a broader sense a long term by the senior management. So while the senior management lays down the long range objectives or the broad horizon, it is the people at the middle and the junior level who are responsible for attaining these targets and sales planning uh, is very effective. Uh, uh, you know in determining several activities or it involves itself in several activities like sales forecasting, demand management and determining the sales targets keeping in mind the desired level of profitability by, for an organization. Now why we are emphasizing upon profitability is that uh, the sales planning uh, not only it will take into account the sales to be generated. Okay, uh, which again would be based on the forecasting, but it will also take into account the expenses that may be allowed. Now we shall be talking about the selling uh, or the sales volume to be earned as well as the expenses to be incurred or the allowable expenses under another topic which we will talk which we will subsequently study in lecture 15 which will be the sales budget. But as for now when we talk about the planning, uh, the sales planning of an organization is done by the senior management as we have discussed. A broad horizon is taken into account, the long range planning is done, the long range targets uh, to be achieved in terms of sales, in terms of market share etc are formulated and devised by them. But of course this is done keeping in mind the grassroot realities or keeping in mind the challenges which are which may be faced or the resource constraints etc uh, with the middle management and with the lower management especially uh, with the uh, sales team at the grassroot level. So while the sales uh, planning is done at the long range it is always uh, done and has to be done very realistically keeping in mind uh, the, the 
uh, you know attainability or the uh, you know of these plans at the grassroots level or at the uh, you know district level or at the territory level so that the sales are attained by the sales people at the grassroots subsequently the its branch targets or the area targets are met subsequently the regional or the zonal targets are met and so uh, the final uh, long range plan is actually attained so uh, sales planning is an effective method third which will involve activities like forecasting demand management uh, and uh, you know the sales targets determining the sales targets to be achieved by the middle and the lower level especially the lower level sales team uh, of course uh, keeping in mind both the sales volume and the uh, you know uh, selling allowable selling expenses so that the net profitability of the organization can be attained so sales planning will involve one uh, the, uh, the determining the targets in terms of sales in terms of selling volume selling expenses allowed and two keeping in mind the resources keeping in mind the constraints which may be faced by a company or by the industry at large now the job of the planning team does not only stop at the determining determining the sales plan it is equally important that such plans are communicated to those who are to execute it which will be the via the middle level it reaches the junior level and uh, so the means of achieving these targets should also be made clear to the lower level and to the uh, sales team at the grassroots level so a uh, sales planning is a holistic exercise which will involve forecasting demand management uh, determining the sales targets keeping in mind one the sales volume and the selling expenses keeping in mind the resource constraints and uh, also it is the job of the uh, planning team to to ensure that uh, the objectives that have been laid out or the long range objectives which have been spelled out are actually broken down into short range objectives targets activities and these are percolated via the middle and the uh, you know uh, lower level right down percolated or filtered to the um, to the people at the uh, at the ground level or at the grassroots so that these activities are attained by the sales force in their respective territories and once these are attained by them the branch level objectives uh, can be uh, attained similarly the zonal level objectives can be attained uh, and the regional or the national level objectives can be attained so this is how sales planning is done now what is a good sales plan a good sales plan is one which has to be aligned with the vision and mission of the organization we have already discussed earlier that we start with the corporate planning and there the corporate plan is much guided by the vision and the mission statement also a good sales plan must be very practical it must be realistic it must be achievable uh, when we talk about a plan it is very important that uh, resources and constraints are kept into mind or taken into consideration now while planning is done by the uh, senior management uh, it is it is very essential that the senior management takes into account the challenges which can be faced by the sales teams uh, all across the various territories uh, it could be uh, you know the territory uh, or it could be a it could be a, a sing, you know a unit a micro unit as a sales territory it could be challenges faced in the branch or in the zone or in the region and uh, uh, resources or the constraints have to be kept into mind while these uh, objectives are spelled out or formulated uh, objectives have to be difficult yes but they have to be realistic they have to be challenging but again they have to be very very realistic keeping in mind uh, the the resources that the sales people are equipped it be it financial resources be it time be it other kinds of challenges which they may have to face uh, as a company or as a as a com uh, element in the industry or as a co constituent of the particular industry the objectives which are spelled out as a part of the planning process uh, serve as directions for achieving the broader goals of the organization and um, so it's very important that the sales plan also uh, clearly spells out the sufficient timeline for achieving the goals of the organization we have also discussed earlier that planning always has to be something which is time bound and the time here acts as a 
constraint it acts as something which act also acts as a control mechanism we have also discussed earlier that until and unless there is a control mechanism a plan is something which will be absolutely null and void it will never be attainable so planning and control go together as siamese twins and so it's very important that's the sales plan which is set out or laid out in terms of both sales volume as well as the expenses uh, you know are clearly uh, bound by time and there is sufficient amount of time uh, which has been which which has been uh, you know demarcated for achieving the goals of the organization uh, so so what we are trying to say is that these goals should be something which may be which have to be clear they have to be precise uh, they have to be difficult and challenging but they have to be very very realistic further uh, it is uh, the sales plan should not only specify the goals and objectives but also the means to achieve them broad range goals or long range goals and planning is good but then it has to be further broken down into short range plans strategies tactics action plans and so uh, the manner in which these uh, goals have to be achieved should also be spelled out by the um, middle, middle management and the lower management for sales planning to be effective planning activities must be defined either as long range or medium range and short range planning and when we come to short range planning the long range has to be kept in mind which has to be then further broken down into median level plans and short term plans short term plans would in also involve uh, you know short term strategies tactics day to day uh, you know activities which have to be um, you know done or performed so as to be able to achieve the uh, long the medium range plans and the long range plans also the sales plan must be flexible enough to adjust to the changing needs of the company or to the market we have seen earlier that an organization operates in an environment which is a micro and a which is a micro and a macro environment and the micro environment uh, gives up strengths and opportunities the macro environment provides to an organization opportunities and threats so it's very important that uh, the organization or the firm clearly studies its micro and macro environment and accordingly brings about a change uh, in the policies and in their plans so the sales plan must be flexible enough to adjust to the changing needs of the company or to the market yes they must not be changed very frequently they should not be very made very very flexible because then that would uh, you know dilute the control uh, mechanism yet they must be provision for flexibility so that the company can uh, you know uh, take advantage of the opportunities it can fight the threats and it can uh, devise strategies uh, and tactical plans with with respect to the four p's accordingly uh, now let's move further uh, and discuss uh, something about uh, uh, a sales forecast so what is a sales forecast now a sales forecast here is, is about uh, estimating future sales uh, you know in case better sales forecast are made it enables a company to perform better make more informed decisions and uh, any kind of sales forecast uh, serves as a basis for determining the short run and the long term performance of an organization so it's very very important that uh, there is a forecast because this forecast will give inputs uh, into the kind of sales that are expected uh, for a particular company or uh, various companies operating in the industry uh, giving in uh, giving uh, keeping in mind the micro and the macro environment also it will give an idea uh, and uh, to other departments be it production be it operations be it you know purchase department or be it the hr or be it the sales team to to organize itself or to get prepared uh, for future requirements so uh, so so in this sense uh, sales forecasts are extremely crucial because they help estimate uh, future sales trends and gives an idea about the kind of uh, strategies and the kind of tactics that need to be employed not and the kind of functional plans that need to be devised by the different departments so as to be able to meet uh, you know uh, so as to be able to take advantage of maximally of the sales forecast figures now uh, so so as i said this uh, sales forecast figures are also used by other departments uh, one for example uh, for the production and operations department uh, sales forecast helps them formulate the plans for production uh, in case of manufacturing and production departments it also helps assess the adequacy of the production capacity of an organization so a sales forecast will help them plan their production facilities plan their production capacities in case uh, they, they they are short of certain uh, resources be it 
machines or be it manpower, they can organize themselves better uh, if sales forecasts are very positive in the future. Uh, they may you know buy new machinery or go in for an upgradation of technology or go for automation or they may uh, you know hire new more workers or they may have to plan their production facilities such that they instead of working one shift or two shift they may have to run the plant or the, run the uh, factory for for the in, for three shifts so accordingly they'll be able to plan their production uh, you know they will also be able to plan uh, their uh, you know inventory levels keeping in mind uh, the raw material required or the works in progress and uh, things like that so that uh, and of course the finished goods so that ultimately uh, the basic principle of logistics um, is met which is make, making the right things available at the right time at the right place uh, at the at, at the tight time so um, a sales forecast helps the production department, helps the production and operations department. Uh, one, in you know, in terms of their production planning. Two, in terms of their production capacity planning, inventory management, etc. Uh, sales forecasts are also used by the purchase department. Uh, the purchase department would get an idea about the kind of uh, you know resources that must be immediately procured, uh, be it raw material, components, or parts, or uh, you know. Um, supplies, business uh, services. Also, the sales forecast uh, would be used by finance department to manage its cash inflows and outflows, of, you know, and for planning for profits, uh, planning for its working capital management, capital, planning for long term investments. Also, it would help the HR or the human resource management department to, to determine the manpower requirements, both in terms of uh, adequacy and appropriateness. Uh, that is the number of people required and the kind of skills and uh, cap capabilities and competencies and educational qualifications that they must have so as to be able to uh, you know be uh, you know work effectively in the organization and uh, the company then would be able to have enough manpower to to be able to ensure that production uh, and sales and marketing activities or uh, uh, you know can be done in effective manner and there is no shortage anywhere because of dearth of uh, you know trained manpower or because either because of the manpower is less or because the right kind of manpower is not available. So, the uh, HR department would also have an idea about manpower planning and uh, you know did be able to determine the right kind of people required in the right number so as to be able to ensure that uh, not only is production carried out unhampered but also sales and marketing activities are done in the best possible manner so that the organization is able to gain advantage of the uh, positive sales forecast which which is there uh, in the future now uh, moving beyond uh, the, so so the sales forecast here that means acts as a precursor for planning a lot of activities for the organization now uh, let us move further and talk about the different kinds of sales forecasts so uh, as we said a sales forecast is an estimated unit of sales in either rupees or number of units uh, which could be sold for a specific period of time and a sales forecast could be prepared uh, on the following basis it could be a product level sales forecast it could be a time period based sale forecast it could also be a geographical area uh, sales forecast so let us first start with what a product level sales forecast is now, a product level sales forecast is done for a, a product, a specific product, okay. It is very product specific and is made product wise as total sales or it could be made as industry sales or product line sales, etc. So, the focus of study here is the number of units sold uh, or you know expected to be in demand in the near future. So, a uh, number of uh, units of product expected to be in demand in future. So, that is how uh, we would be calculating a product level sales forecast. So, product level sales forecast will talk about uh, the forecast of a sales or a forecast you know uh, estimated demand uh, in the near future with respect to total sales uh, of a, you know the company or industry sales of the product or product line sales etc. Uh, when we talk of time period level it is sales forecast which is done either as a short term 
or as a medium term or as a long term and when we talk of a geographical level sales forecast we, uh, uh, we talk of a forecast done on basis of geographical units which could be countries, it could be regions, it could be districts. In fact, it could also be very broadly continent. So, if we kind of see uh, for example, a particular company makes refrigerators and air conditioners and uh, microwave ovens. So, a product level forecast would be done product wise that means, uh, what would be the industry sales or the company sales for refrigerators. Similarly, what would be the company sales or industry sales for microwaves etc. But when it is a time period, it would be uh, say uh, you know uh, sales for refrigerators estimated um, you know quarterly or half yearly or yearly or five yearly. So, that would be in terms of short term, medium term or long term and uh, when we talk of uh, the geographic level, we are basically talking of whether uh, the you know when, when these refrigerators or air conditioners uh, the sales forecast is done continent wise ok for example, European market or uh, you know the Asian market or it could be countries within you know uh, for example, Asia it could be Asia or Southeast Asia or SARC countries or it could be regions for example, if it is India it is North, West, East and South or if it is districts and within uh, North there would be several districts. Uh, where each of the states is further broken down into districts and sub districts and so forth. So, that is how uh, we determine uh, the sales forecast uh, whether at a product level or at a time period or in terms of geographical level. Now, uh, this, this shows it little more broadly if you see uh, where uh, you know we have the uh, industry wise uh, sales, uh, company sales, product line sales or product variant sales or product item sales. Now, let us take for example, a refrigerator. So, and all the kinds of different refrigerators would be the uh, total sales. Industry sales uh, could be again uh, ref, you know uh, broken down in terms of uh, you know uh, the refrigerators which are say uh, you know the more primitive technology used or the modern technology used. Uh, company sales could be specific to a particular company, product line sales could be in terms of whether it is uh, you know a one door refrigerator or a two door refrigerator or if it is frost free and non frost free. A product variant could be in terms of uh, one door or two door uh, and within a, a, a two door is it you know the is it the top which is the uh, ref, you know the icing unit or it is the bottom which is the icing unit which we see in several uh, you know kinds of refrigerators today where the bottom part is the cooling I, icing and cooling unit and the uh, the top part is the refrigerating unit and then you have product item sales which would be the stock stock keeping unit or the SKU. So, in this way uh, we would talk of uh, forecast the uh, you know prepare a forecast at the product level. So, uh, similarly it, it could be you know if all the different companies have their respective demands it would constitute the total sales and uh, you know within within the industry and then you have the company sales which would be specific to different companies which would mean uh, company A has a separate sales you know product level sales forecast and company B would have a uh, separate product level sales forecast and then product line and product variant and product item sales. Similarly, if we take it a uh, time period it could be long range or long term uh, and then medium range or medium term or it could be short range and short term and geographic area as we said it could either be the global market or the world forecast for refrigerators or it could be continent wise or nations or countries, it could be region north and south, it could be territories which would constitute different branches or different districts and it could be uh, at an individual level as well. So, this is the different levels at which sales forecast can be done. Now, uh, before we move further into forecasting, let us discuss a few terms very very relevant uh, to the sales forecasting. So, first is a market potential. So, what is market potential here? When we talk of market potential, uh, we say it is the maximum sales or the best possible sales which a company which a companies in a particular industry can earn for, for a given product or service in a distinct time period. So, this is how we explain uh, market potential to be. It is the best possible sales which companies in a particular industry can earn 
for a particular product or a particular service in a given prime period or in a distinct time period. Now, for determining the market potential, all the products and services marketed by all the companies in industry are taken into consideration and such a calculation could be made in monetary rupees, uh, monetary units like rupees or dollars for a specific time period which in most cases is, is a year. Now, in this case what we assume is that the best possible or the maximum sales is happening because uh, marketing expenditure uh, have actually reached infinity and any further increases in marketing expenditure will not have an impact on the demand. Okay, so, what we mean as marketing expenditures here means marketing expenditures here in terms of promotional, in terms of uh, territory management or in terms of uh, you know uh, uh, selling activities. So, here uh, the marketing expenditures approach infinity and as they approach infinity as they are the maximum possible that can be assigned what would be the maximum amount of sales which all the companies in a particular industry would be able to generate for a particular market and in a particular time period. This is what we ex ex explain as the market potential. Okay. Now, the so second is market forecast. Now, the market forecast here is the anticipated industry sales. While the market potential is the maximum, the market forecast is something which the industry expects to earn or anticipates to earn for a given product or a service in a defined time span in a given market and again within a marketing expenditure. So, again here we speak that this marketing expenditure is specified keeping in mind the marketing expenditure keeping in mind the fact that there is a distinct time period and a market seg a segment or a, a market which is being studied maximum possible sales which the industry anticipates will happen is the market forecast. So, the maximum sales becomes the market potential, but the anticipated becomes the forecast. So, the market forecast here depicts the anticipated industry sales for a given product or service in a defined time span in a defined market and with, with a stipulated marketing expenditure. So, this is what we explain as market forecast. Now, let us come more macro sorry micro we were talking about uh, the 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 uh, first two which was the market potential and the market forecast which was more macro in nature now let us come to something which is more micro where uh, we are going to talk about the um, sales potential and the company sales forecast now what is the sales potential now the maximum sales or the best possible level of sales which a particular company can earn for a particular product or service in a specified time period for a given market. Now, this particular market here could either be a geographical unit or a territory, it could also be a customer segment. So, the maximum sales or the best possible sales that a company feels it can, uh, can earn in for a particular product or service in a time period and for a given market be the market a geographical unit or be the market uh, customer segment is referred to as the sales potential. Okay. Now, here it must be specified that the sales potential is something which is company specific, it is company based not industry based, market potential is industry based. Company sales put, uh, com because it is company specific the sales potential is also referred to as the company sales potential. So, the company sales potential and the sales potential is the same. The second is what we refer to here uh, we will refer to is the company sales forecast. Again while the sales potential is the maximum sales which a company can earn for a given period for a given market uh, for a particular product or service what it forecasts or what it anticipates it will earn actually comprises the sales forecast. So, company sales forecast depicts the anticipated sales which a particular company is expected to earn for a given product or a service in a defined time span under a predefined marketing plan or a marketing program and for a given market. So, this is what we call as the company sales forecast. So, if you see the company sales forecast and the, com and the company sales potential is micro, they are very specific to the company. But when we talk of the market potential or when we talk of the market forecast, it is more it macro because it is industry specific it is not company specific. 
Now, the next is what we refer to as the sales budget and the sales quota. Now, what is a sales budget? The sales budget is a description of a company's expected sales volume either in units, again, either you know in monetary units or in physical units along with the estimation of the expected selling expenses. So, it is the company's expected volume of sales in units either monetary or physical units. Physical units would be in the number of units, monetary units would be either in rupees or in dollars along with the estimation, estimation of the expected selling expenses. So, it will basically give you complete details on the expenses or the expected expenses on selling of a particular product. Okay, so, one it talks about the volumes, second it talks about the selling expenses and in a way it talks about the kind of selling expenses which can have which 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 will uh, one one should incur or will un incur to earn a particular level of sales volume. The next thing is the sales quota. Now, the sales quota or the sales target is the performance goal which is set for a marketing unit. Um, we, we, we can refer to it as the sales target. It is a performance goal. It is the number of sales in units or rupees which a marketing branch or a zone or any unit is expected to earn. Now, what is this marketing unit? This marketing unit could either be a salesperson, it could be a branch, it could be a zone, it could be a you know the national level. Uh, the, the marketing unit could be again a salesperson or a branch or a region or a zone or a national level or a, or a member of the trade channel. So, any and all of these could be marketing units and the sales quota here is the performance goal which is set for any of these uh, marketing units. A sales quota would mean the goal to be achieved by a salesperson or to be achieved in a uh, you know branch or in a region or in a zone or at the national level or by members of the trade channels. So, these this is what we refer to as a sales quota. So, with this we come to an end of this particular lecture. Uh, the references are still Kandif, Govani and Puri sales and distribution management Pearson India education service. Havaldar and Kavali sales and distribution management text in cases McGraw Hill education uh, third edition 2017 and Havaldar and Kavale 2007-2008 Sales and Distribution Management, Tata Megro Hill, New Delhi, India. So, this brings us to an end of the third lecture on the third module of the course. I hope you have found this lecture beneficial. Thank you.